What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be going over a Hyperspace Hunter Isla Mock video here, going over a guide for setup and why I think he's honestly one of the best supports in the game. Now, does he have the offensive capability of someone like a Fairy Queen Vesa? No, not necessarily. Depending on the game mode, if there's a ton of enemies, then yes, he definitely does. If a single boss damage dealer like a Star Expedition, then no, not as good. But there's one nice thing about him, and his shield are so overpowered that he doesn't even have to do an attack and your team can still get their survivability out of them both shields and then when that shield wears off it turns into a heal so let's go over this hero let's talk about why hyperspace hunter Isla is literally one of my favorite heroes in the game right now and why i think he's so good he's a warrior he's a transcendence hero all the makings for a perfect god tier hero in idle heroes hopefully you guys enjoy this one hit that subscribe button let's jump right into it <laughs> So yes, he has this really cool vigilante animation, like he's going through this big city, stopping all the bad guys. A uh, little bloody though, but hey, he is a very, very solid hero, and like I said, he is a warrior, and you guys know, uh, right now, warriors are like the best heroes in Transcendence Heroes, uh, in Idle Heroes, it's just absolutely amazing, and his skill set is here to really match it up. Now, honestly, things like his active ability don't really care, because yes, he can do a bunch of types of damage abilities, uh, but again, he's not really here for the damage, uh, even for like his basic attack, like it, it can do damage based off max HP, there's a chance to stun, which is a very nice CC, I will say I do like his basic attack stun, and then afterwards he gives his allies block chance, so... He is one hero that I actually enjoy having him do a basic attack and not an active because of that block chance, whereas the active ability just has like a multi-layer type of hit, um, additional hit if you do have him fully sublimed out. This is definitely a hero you don't need a lot of sublimation on either. Uh, if we do take a look at the tree, I would probably go for the upgrade of Bullet Dance here just because of the block chance. Beyond that, though, it gives him more precision. Uh, it does help to have this additionally reduces the target's precision, but remember, it's only one target for this, so it's not that great. And then this one's kind of cool, too. Reduces the target's control immunity, so that'll help if you have Lord of Fear Aspen, Starwing Jara, uh, any of those heroes on your team. So that's pretty cool. You don't need a ton of sublimation for him. This is probably one I would go for is his third branch here for Splendid Block. So, when an ally blocks successfully, grants the ally a shield equal to 860% of attack and elegance for two rounds. So, elegance is pretty cool because it increases their all damage reduction by 15%, which is huge, and then restores their HP equal to 430% of his attack. So, again, you want him very offensive uh, and a homeowner of some sort. Uh, and when elegance ends, uh, the shield becomes ineffective it basically gives that heal so you're shielded you might have taken damage in order to proc the shield but then once the shield expires you get a big heal so it's a really really cool combo uh some of the sublimations aren't really necessary though it is kind of cool that um at the last sublimation the noble sublimation additionally increases the buff owners all damage reduction by 15 percent for two rounds when elegance becomes ineffective so essentially that means the first two rounds you have the shield you'll guarantee you have that 15 percent and then when it finally disappears if they do break it or it just expires uh you'll get another two rounds of all damage reduction oh pretty cool so i don't know if it stacks though that's something we haven't really been able to test or see is if just for example you get the shield uh, the shield only lasts for one round and then it procs the heal. I don't know if you keep this 15%. It looks like this 15% isn't for like the two rounds of shield. It looks like this one is just for while you have elegance. So the second elegance ends, it. so I think it's just a solid 15%. It's not like it's going to stack or anything like that. Uh, and then lastly, his uh, self block is when he will counterattack with a good chance to stun burn all that other stuff uh, this is kind of cool because it also has a way to heal when he does successfully block quite a bit uh, and most of these other things aren't that amazing. The deep sublimation is when an ally is under a basic attack or takes damage from an active skill. Higher space hunter Islamok counterattacks, dealing damage to the attacker um, and to nearby it. I don't know if this counterattack can proc the stun or not. I haven't really paid enough attention to it. It would be cool if it does. But this is the one I think is kind of cool. When self-block successfully increases or inflicts one layer of provoke 
to the attacker till the battle ends. Provoke is a mark effect. Each layer reduces the damage dealt to Hunter, Hyperspace Hunter Isle Mock up to 10 layers. So if you, they're like taunted or something like that to him, it's kind of cool. But honestly, out of everything here, I feel like this is one hero you don't need a ton of sublimation on versus other ones. Uh, just getting the splendid block way up there is very, very important. Now, gear-wise, you just want to kind of gear him up as tanky as possible. I usually just run an attack attack stone just so that I have the most attack value possible. In reality, a speed attack stone, a block attack stone, anything like that, even an HP attack stone will be pretty solid for him. And then as far as artifacts goes, there's really just one here. I have the Lucky Candy Bar on right now because I use him instead of Fairy Queen Vesa in our Star Expedition lineup for that survivability. But the Gilded Purple Fan is like the perfect artifact for him why because he's already taking so much crit damage reduction because he's a warrior from star spawn and treasure train uh, he gets that 15 all damage dealt which is cool and 25 percent hp but most importantly the shields are amazing because he auto generates 30 percent of max hp shield or up to 30 percent at the end of every round and he basically just has an entire battle of 50 percent damage reduction now that does kind of you have to decide because if the battles are still short crown does win out in my opinion because you're basically just getting 75 percent all damage dealt and then it slowly works its way down i mean heck it's till like the third round is when the, this one actually becomes more effective so you have to figure out how long the battle's going uh but this one does have some nice offensive capability with that all damage dealt as well uh as far as enables go i usually don't touch on this much because it really just depends on what you guys got going on on your account and everything and what game mode you're going on and then i like building them super super tanky when it comes to void and printing so we have uh the damage reduction we have block chance and we have control immunity block might be a little overkill I like running more than 100% just because there is a chance that enemies do have precision in certain game modes and certain heroes. Uh, so I, I like going a little bit overboard with it as well. And of course, his skin is absolutely amazing. Attack, HP, damage reduction. That's literally all the stats you want on him. HP for more survivability, attack for more powerful shields and healing, and then damage reduction to just simply not die. And let's be honest, it is absolutely awesome looking. I would definitely take him up to level 20 of 20. What we're planning on doing is we're going to just max him out to level 100 and then work on our next target. And of course, the one thing that I don't necessarily like are his tenants. I need to build another one of him because, again, you don't want assassins as his tenant spot. Holmes Young is a pretty solid one. Vulcan is a good secondary. It sucks right here because we have an assassin and a priest. So, again, really bad for the attack stat bonuses. And then, oh, wait. We have a Sword Flash available just because uh, we don't have our Mockman in the slot. But again, normally it's Sword Flash, which is an Assassin. But at the very least, you know, it is a Transcendence Hero, which is good, uh, versus a Priest of Elena. So I'm kind of hoping he gets some more Tenants, but it looks like he'll get what? One more? Two more, it looks like. So we'll get another one for Tenant Spot 2 and Tenant Spot 4. That doesn't solve the problem of Tenant Spot 3. But still, they're not bad. It's just not a Transcendence Hero you're going to go for very, very early on your account. But as you start building up an account, maybe Transcendence Hero 4, 5, 6, this is going to be a perfect fit for your account because he's just absolutely busted crazy amazing you guys can see a ton of videos on the channel especially our pvp videos that really 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 do highlight this splendid block so go check out any of the videos you see with pandas or pvp there's a couple of them. i'll try to put a link up in the top corner so you guys can click on it and go check out some fun pvp shenanigans with only two transcendence heroes and four shaho hope you guys enjoy this one i'll see you guys next time